Welcome back. Today we're taking a look at some game reviews provided very so kindly by both Alexi and by Shogi Harbor. So without further review, without further uh, I for ado, let's get to the review. Uh, it's a bit noisy, so let's turn down the volume a touch. There we go. It's still a touch noisy. I must have things really peaked here somehow. Um, Alright, so this game here I was playing as Gota. We could see there's my opponent's name, there's me. We were playing on Shogi Wars, and I imported this game into uh, Lee Shogi. And now we're taking a look. So here I was playing Fourth Foul Rook, together with my bishop advanced to prevent this pawn from advancing. And then I move the silver up, as I have on many occasions, to vaguely threaten whether or not um, I should make any threat against this pawn in front of the king and the bishop. Somehow taking this pawn has like never worked out, but I'm always curious to see what happens when I like bring the silver up and start pretending like I'm going to go after it. Opponents can do interesting things. Yes. Um, so first of all, yes, yeah, so this, uh, Alexi notes that this is generally a GQ send shape, aiming for, uh, the, either the Anaguma, which would be the king in the corner, or left Mino, which would be the silver up, the gold to the center. I don't know what GQ Sen refers to. I think Sen is, like, used for a thousand or something in G... I've seen in other words, but I don't recognize it here. Um, Q, I think, refers to beginning or beginner, as we're both one Q here. Uh, I don't know to what extent you can just take particles of Japanese words and smash them together to make another word. Um, so here, this is the move I played, just not figuring out like what it is I should be doing. I played this to kind of pass time, unfortunately. Acknowledging that like if they do play their king into the corner, uh, this will be one move that's well spent, but otherwise it's pretty not, not necessarily well spent. But here, yeah, I can build this, apparently. This is a shape. Uh, covers the head of my king. The silver covers the gold. The gold covers all this. This gold might complement this silver, but it's it's generally an active shape. Alexi notes, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, I see how... And in other occasions, if the opponent hasn't put enough pieces between uh, their king and... Uh, my attacking forces, I'm able to ply this open quite forcefully. But I don't think it's quite enough here. But uh, Alexi says I can uh, proceed this way reasonably. And hey, if I can have a reasonable attack, that's fine by me. Now this notes that um, pawn 2-4 intending to take the knight next is tactically vulnerable due to this. So pawn 2-4 isn't really the move there. They'd be better served completing their castle, defending this, and then playing pawn 2-4 at a more opportune in time. And uh, yeah, I can still bring the bishop back, bring the knight back, and try to break this open. That's really sharp. That's impressive. Um, so earlier on in this line, as there become threats of like trying to take the pawn, hit the bishop, try to open the diagonal and such, the silver comes out. And then the silver gets pinned. And here, Senta voluntarily uh, starts the bishop exchange rather than avoid something really forcing, I assume. Or maybe this is to help cut off the rook. Similar to, there was a game we were reviewing a couple days ago where I brought my silver up here. And then the, eventually the best move was silver back against this pawn advance to prevent the rook from promoting. So maybe this is also just to stop the rook from advancing further. 
Um, but yeah, in the event of this really sharp line, that's a fork. Uh, but he marks that pawn two four is a mistake, and sure, some material can be grabbed, but it's not quite enough. And I do thank him for presenting this entire variation, because I'm still, although I'm a little bit skeptical at the end of it, I'm less skeptical than if he had just outright omitted these moves. So, um, yeah, he took a knight and a lance, but this rook is advancing, uh, and the king's not fully castled yet, so I'm somewhat less skeptical of this. Anyway, I played this really slow move. Our opponent brings up their silver, which actually doesn't do much to protect against my fourth file rook. Um, I could also aim for a Yoryu. Yoryu. I mis uh, parsed that earlier. The, this must RYU for rook or dragon. Uh, I don't know what that refers to here, but uh, this is sort of game where the rooks become super active. Uh, I've heard Shogi Harbor talk about vertical shogi. Maybe that's what we have in mind here. But yeah, this is a relatively recent way of playing. Pushing this pawn, but also getting this rook active while the other rook activates. And just heck breaks loose. Honestly, if I get an attack and it's not completely losing, it's decent. Because um, original ideas I come up with are quite difficult. Yes, yeah, so I couldn't find an attacking path here. Uh, Alexi's more optimistic about this. Somehow. Oh, this is still a pin. Check that out. That is really useful. So yeah, they have to defend this, otherwise tactics just get overwhelming. Yeah. So, this looks playable, he says, but... Um, yeah, better than that, if this is playable, I've survived the opening. That's really nice. And with the bishop still intact and the king not yet in the corner, that definitely looks playable. Oh, you know it's a side variation. Uh, so, yeah, possibly instead of gold 3-2 to defend this, alternatively I could play bishop 4-4. Four, four. That's fair. Anyway, apparently I led them slowly into the corner here. It's more common to use the silver to put pressure on the diagonal than to use the pawn. Okay, that would explain why it was so difficult to chop down this pawn later. Um, so I'm not going to... I can't skip over all these variations. I think I get the idea that, like, clearly in the game my pawn advance didn't do squat, but... Uh, Black doesn't need to panic and can even sacrifice this pawn. Well, okay, if... Oh, the silver's still pinned. I was questioning, why didn't he just take here? That's not legal, so okay. Um, so yeah, this is a way to survive. Black threatens 4-4 four, four bishop, 4-4 four, four bishop, and 4-3 bishop. Um, so this deals with the 4-3 bishop threat. Um, so this result is about even after king-9-9. Nine, nine, King 9 is not the only move. They could also move to block the diagonal earlier. They could also move this to... Yeah, this is what I tend to see more often. As this active counterattack, or even it attacks faster. Normally I've spent more time castling than I spent this game. But yeah, normally I see them pursuing my bishop, and it gets quite difficult for my bishop to last there forever. So... Uh, yeah, that's another way to pursue that. Um, interesting. So this is a strategic victory, and this is kind of why I submitted the game in the first place, is that somehow my opponent got this strategic victory, and I couldn't find resources before this point. And now we looked at all these various uh, variations and ideas, so 
I guess to underscore what we've looked at, is this they've started to form their castle. Um, here I played a slow move. Here I start to castle my king, but I could have played more actively here. So this is one major attacking idea that I just didn't know if it was viable or not, and now we know this is viable, um, or could be. Um, another point is that activating this rook with the silver having moved away is quite interesting. Uh, even when they're threatening to like attack over here, he keeps tossing around this word Yoryu, which I assume, like, we know video games, we know Ryu and Dragon are the same thing. So, yeah, we want, this potentially could result in a game where, okay, yes, clearly their rook is breaking through, but they've not completed a castle, so it's fine for me to pursue an attack and just ignore the dragon for now, as long as my attack is successful. And that's not so easy to judge, but in many cases it could be successful if I'm not burning time, uh, not just like wasting a lot of moves. So this silver move is quite defensive and allows me some time to attack. Um, so yeah, here black didn't need to panic as they did in the well, okay. Here, I'm playing as white, as Gota. Black, being the first player, uh, can sacrifice the pawn after this uh, attack, but this is a good path. And yeah, they can start, or they can continue castling, or they can counterattack, etc. But this is about even in all lines. Whereas what I pursued is not so great. And then, uh, somewhere around here, I lost five moves. Okay, one, I completed my castle. Two, I built this stronger castle than necessary. Yeah, and here I'm just shuffling my pieces, because I don't know what the heck to do. And yeah, they've built a much stronger castle than I have. I missed my chances earlier, and they had the strategic victory here. Alexi notes, one of the problems with Black's position is that he can't make his castle stronger than White's. Um, I'm assuming he's reversing Black and White now that I'm looking at this. Because, yeah, I'm playing as second player, but anyway. Yeah, this is a super strong castle. Um, yeah, there's also clear ways of making headway. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I guess time will tell. So, they are able to aim on the head of this bishop. Yeah, this I've seen this sort of thing before. I played my king out, which... Oh wait, hang on. So this pawn 3-6... Yeah, and then the knight advance. This would be a more normal way to proceed. They moved the bishop, which is a bit weird, but they're aiming at this. Ooh. And I could defend that, and should defend it, not with my king. Um, yeah, so this pawn move is somewhat risky because it helps me activate my rook. Um, rook 4-2 fully exploits this, whereas the recapture immediately didn't so much exploit it somehow. Oh, my rook's not hanging. It's actually defended twice here, so I don't need to worry about a discovered attack. Um, so yeah, instead I can just slowly proceed one step at a time. And with this rook and bishop having moved away from this file, I don't need to worry about this point anymore. Instead, I proceed the faster way, which I thought was just as fine, right? Um, I'm not seeing what the great distinction here is. Other than, I guess in this line, my bishop... No? Isn't that the same position? Maybe it was more forced one way than the other. I don't know. But yeah, blocking my rook was bad. But I... Like, what should I do? 
this. Um, yeah, I do need stuff in hand to pursue. Well, I have a pawn in hand already. Uh, this bishop is pinned to the rook, so yeah, this is a fun place to exchange pieces. Neither of us have brought our knight out, but they can't easily advance their knight right now. So this is the oh, that's the right moment to try to do something. Um, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that's an attacking idea. And if they take this knight, uh, this knight covers this pawn, so it's not. They're not necessarily aiming directly at my castle. While I do have some attacking ideas, it's not easy for me either. But blocking my rook was a no starter, or non starter. Yeah, and they could have just proceeded here and attacked faster. In fact, my bishop is pinned to my rook as soon as... If I were to take that, bishop takes. That'd be super painful. Instead, um, yeah, my rook's active again all of a sudden. But I can't take the pawn due to this discover check idea. Um, after the bishop exchange, white gets some play against this rook. Oh, yeah. Ain't that the truth. So, yeah, this... Mm-hmm. And the game proceeded this far. So I got some activity. I was able to collect this lance. Better is to move the rook here than there after this drop. So my rook gets attacked. My castle implodes. But um, this attack runs out, I guess. My king's all the way up here. My rook has no chance of ever... I don't know. It's kind of a mess. But after this, uh, I didn't get any compensation. In fact, my rook's still in harm's way here. Yeah, so this helps them attack me faster. I shouldn't have done that. Anyway, we end up with this position. Um, why this pawn 4-2 idea? I don't know. Oh, because this pawn promotion is immense. It opens everything here. Uh, and they should have done this, clearly. Gold takes rook 3-1, so this is overworked here. Um, so this definitely not an enjoyable position. Yeah, and my everything is hanging here. Uh, although I can retreat the bishop to try to hold this together, it's uh, it's not great. I don't know. It's at least contentious. But here, yeah, I tried to prevent this major threat. Um, Rick four nine. Uh, also would have done dealt with this threat. Um, and this apparently 8-5 knight. So this 8-5 knight here is a large threat. Does it show up in the variation? Nah, not immediately. So yeah, here we have a similar sort of situation where um, yeah, they have some issues to deal with in this position. Um, so pawn 4-3, they just start attacking, we go back, they take our knight, we attack, attack again, and yeah, we can see just this confluence of pieces all gathering around the king. It's quite a mess. Uh, so this is, this is Alexei's game review, and then, um... Shogi Harbor had reviewed it first, but we're going to take a look at that review second. Um, so, yeah, I at this point I start playing some desperate defensive tries, which, oh wait, I didn't even find that. I was trying to find some desperate defensive try, I couldn't find it, but 
this would have been a good one. And, you know, this cuts off the dragon. Dragon can still take the knight. Pawn's threatening the bishop. It's, it's still kind of a mess, but this is yet one more defender next to our king. And it's not like I'm going to use the pawn up here anywhere. I have pawns on every other file. So this is the only file I can use the pawn on. This is the best square to put it on. So nothing lost there. Um, but yeah, I missed that. And they crack through and I am just screwed. In addition to whatever time trouble I was likely in at the time. Yeah, so better... We always hear this phrase, attack and defense, and it refers to the bishop 99 times out of 100, it seems. So the bishop is capable of attacking this side of the board, or defending this side of the board and attacking that side of the board at the same time. Bishops are really good at that sort of thing. Rooks can often attack laterally and defend vertically, or vice versa. Um... But yeah, bishops have much easier time attacking across this board. Um, after this knight drop, yeah, I am screwed. Um, but in this position, after after I drop this goal down five one, here they don't have to try to break down what I've constructed. They can break down both right around my king, as well as um, the thing that's holding up my silver. So they don't need to negotiate on my terms, they can just walk right in. But instead, they take the front... Actually, I'm defending this way. So I did find an attacking and defending move, it's just... It wasn't enough to save me here. They had a very strong castle. And most of my chances to break this were earlier in the game. But we did see some ideas about like how to use rooks and bishops and such to pursue this. But yeah, I got mated. As I do. So that was one blitz game down. These are some impressions about how to attack in the early game, as well as um, just a lot of defensive ideas that I could have tried a lot better. And if I defended better, then maybe I would have had another chance to attack. But here I did grab some materials, so I should expect to have to defend for a bit. And maybe even concede some material back. So, lots and lots of important details. Um, yeah, I'm white. So, this Bishop 5 5 definitely helped me get back into the game. And I should have expected this sort of attack. And yeah, this word keeps popping up over and over. Yo do you. Um, so the idea being, hey, if I got a dragon, you got a dragon. Let's see what happens. Um, but then we got to see this other phrase here. Sakusen gachi. Um, so, yep. Uh, I'm just dominated here. Even though I've built a pretty solid castle, it's not enough. There's nothing here. I mean, there is something. It's quite difficult, is what it is. It's not inspiring, is what I'm meaning to say. Even though I built the most solid shape I could find at the time, yeah, this I'm just in a very hard spot in this position. So next, uh, I think that's the same game record here in 2U versus me. Here is Shogi Harbor's analysis of the same game. So perhaps not so much looking at the down deep in the details of every little thing. Uh, I took, I don't know where some of these annotations came from other than I imported the game record. Um, from Shogi Wars into Lee Shogi, and so some extra annotations got added, and I don't know what they're for. But we can see this is the same move list. And here uh, she remarks that uh, this bishop retreat feels quite early uh, for uh, Santa. Uh, she would prefer to try to um, utilize this retreat somehow. 
or I'm not sure exactly what utilize on it means. Exploit might be the word we're looking for. Um, but yeah, the concern this raises is that pawn two four. Uh, pawn takes bishop takes rook two two bishop three three. But then I can take this with check. In fact, that yeah, this is the same variation that Alexi had pointed out. So let's. Let's put it on the board just for reference. Um, so, um, oh, hang on. Um, so, this explains why I don't need to play rook 2 2. Um, I thought rook 2 2 was necessary, it clearly isn't. Um, so, yeah. We can see that that indeed is check, and this is still hanging. So, um, therefore, maybe we don't have to play rook to two immediately, but can instead play pawn four five to keep pressure on the diagonal. Um, but yeah, the and the game as it played out, eventually we did see this open. Uh, but yeah, we have to be careful because of the pawn 2 4 line. And let me see, where is this comment fully written? Is it written here? Yeah. But because the rook on 2 8 is unprotected, because the silver had moved all the way out to 6 6, uh, the opponent has fewer counters if I choose to attack at this point. Anyway, um, so. Uh, when pros played against computers, a silver climb um, 5 6 or 7 6. Wait. Uh, 5 6 and 7 6 are. I don't know. Um, okay, I see. So, yeah, what she's saying is I think this sort of idea. Uh, Alexi made the same point. Um, so there's with a bit more pros. Um, yeah, it's a better pressure than just the simple pawn move. The problem with the pawn move is it interferes with the silver and um, is kind of problematic because how do you follow this punch up? Yeah, there's no way to utilize this, so maybe the silver advance is more promising. Oh, right. So I guess the arrows aren't necessary because we have the variation itself. Sorry for my scroll wheel is doing weird things with the move list. But silver 5-4, this, this. Yeah, that makes sense. I think the pros helps break it up and make you feel like you understand things better. Um, but I'm not sure if it actually helps or not. Um, King eight three. Yeah, this this is something I guess I was unsure about, but I hadn't mentioned it. Um, depending on the situation, we'd like the bishop to eat this pawn. Really? That's curious. Um. For example, uh, let's put in the variation. I'm not sure how I'm going to put in the variation. Um, there's no pass button. Um, one person's passionately asked me to ask the developer if we could add a pass move button for point purposes of illustrating variations. Um, but this could also confuse end users too, so I don't know. It's instructive, but not necessary. So the bishop retreats somewhere, and then eventually pawn 7-5. Um, but here, um, yeah, depending on the situation, you might prefer something like this. But here they have a four-piece castle. And I like the way this is phrased, too. So, like, 
it's not just this particular four-piece castle, but many four-piece castles. This might not be the right attacking idea because uh, this isn't exactly um, going to crush the castle. But sometimes this might be a good idea to quickly get an attack, but this is a super solid shape. Not easily broken. So yeah. Um, pawn at 5-6 at some point will be important for our attack. Oh. Alright, so yeah, by that, um, we mean this. Yep, I'm with you. Okay, so yeah, that was the sample variation we were looking at. Uh, Rook 4-2 feels more natural here. Um, yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Alexi points out the same thing. And I was trying to figure out, like, why are we looking at this um, when the game produced a very similar position. But... If you look at the alternatives here, and I'm struggling to find them, and then maybe that's why these alternatives weren't exactly mentioned. So Rook 4 eight's one idea. Um, another idea could be like this. And uh, we see that this bishop wants to stay active, right? So we don't want to drop a pawn here. But if we don't want to drop a pawn here, like we can't exactly... Uh, drop it back there, because then this would drop, and this still gets cut off. So, um, yeah, pawn 4 eight's not really viable there. Instead, they kind of have to, like, drop this, even though they don't want to, and this cuts off control of that square. And this rook is still active. So, this also forces placement of the only pawn they had in hand. It's not the greatest situation for them. Um, so what other comments were made? So yeah, around I mean, fifth uh, around move thirty, we acknowledge that they had a strategic victory or forty, building this enormous castle. Um, so now we have this position and ask ourselves, who is better and why? Did we do great in the opening? If you don't have confidence in the position, in this position, consider changing opening lines. Um, yeah, that's fair. And if you do have confidence in this position, <laughs> is it misplaced? It's important to have critical uh, thought about this as well. Yeah, this would have been amazing, as uh, both annotators note. Yes, yeah, so this brings a strong attack across the back rank. Everything here is hanging, the gold's floating. It's a mess. Uh, alternatively, I didn't even think about this. Normally, I would think that for Anaguma, it's dangerous to push this pawn, because like, this diagonal is one of the main weaknesses. Um, yeah, the primary weakness is the edge. Oh, I guess now I see why the edge is the primary weakness. These golds are extremely strong. It's not that there's anything special about the edge. It's that um, the golds are very special and hard to attack. So that's why we keep mentioning that the edge is the weakness. Um, second to this weakness is the diagonal. So pushing this surprises me whenever it happens, but it happens often, I guess. Yes, I try to continue reconstructing my castle. Um, ooh, that's sharp. Damn, look at that. That's amazing. Anyway, uh, Rook 3-1 is the main attacking move after you sack this pawn. And yeah, this castle is split. And I don't even have the fortune of being able to move the gold to the left or to my right in the back. 
This is just hanging. Everything's hanging and there's no good way to pull it back together quickly. So in that main line, yeah, I could try to defend with my horse. Oh. Okay, and then this becomes weak. Interesting. Then this is hanging too. Wow, that's sharp. Here we try to punish the enemy for not having pieces in hand. Will we be successful? Can we prevent the rush? Yeah, it's not easy. Honestly, I was trying to prevent the rush here. That, like... I didn't think I had anything else in this position. But this horse is actually decently active on 5-5, five five, and retreating it uh, takes away my most active piece. Um, so aggression needs to meet aggression here. And both annotators noted this. Oh. Woo! Okay, that's cool. Jeez. Side variation, though, if they don't... is an alternate move to taking the knight. They could try to prevent my knight from jumping. And then we can insist. And then this square tends to be a really nice square uh, for attacking pieces here. Like, every square that's not immediately next to both golds uh, tends to be a decent attacking square in this shape. But yeah, if you try to attack closer to the golds, it's much harder. Um, so yeah, they can try to better batten the hatches, but that doesn't stop the attack. Uh, this lance drop is kind of nuts. Um, weird text highlight there. Alright, so yeah, they try to... Wait, why would they take with the knight then? Is it too dangerous to take with other pieces? Um... It's not that it's too dangerous to take it to their pieces, it's that they want to. Okay, replacing the knight loses a piece here, so they should take back first. Yeah, I don't know about this defense. I'm not sure. So, like, this is definitely a great attacking move. Uh, this is demonstrative of why just taking a knight might not be the right answer for them, I think. That's how I read this. Um, this is a retreat. Um, ultimately, I guess it doesn't matter much whether they attack or retreat. Because the lance drop here is going to result in a very similar position. Here, maybe it makes some difference, I would assume. Um... Yeah, we don't have a variation in here for silver 8, 6. Um, hmm. I'm not sure this is so easy. Still, there are a lot of cool ideas to look at, but I don't know. Yeah, that would be nice if the opponent allows this kind of stuff, right? Um, anyway, her main point is that I need to play more actively and hit before they hit here. Because if I can't stop the rush, why do I try? Okay, then I do come up on this attacking idea, but it's a bit late, isn't it? And then this rook retreat is atrocious, um, as Alexi had pointed out. Um, gold 6-4. It's played in the game. Bishop 7 1, again, a key attacking idea. So, uh, concludes the remarks. Lee Shogi auto annotated this. And I copied uh, this comment from Discord into here, which is why it has my name there. But in the end, I ate two gold generals with my dragon and still had no effect on this. Isn't this a scary castle? I assume so. Uh, instead, 
maybe I move 72 instead of trying to defend everything, which is extremely risky, perhaps impossible. Trying to find a counterattack with like Rook 49, as we looked at here, um, was good in this case because the attack lands quite heavily and early. Um, I'm surprised. It's really difficult to judge these positions because you have to pick the right moment uh, to attack. And it has to hit just hard enough. Um, if you attack too early, it's too light. If you attack, if you try to defend too much and attack too late, this is what happens. So for the opponent against this castle, there's a lot to figure out. Um, so that's why she made her comment earlier about, well, if this is too scary, maybe reconsider your opening moves instead of trying to find a way out of this. Um, basically the horse 5-5, five five, uh, or some other piece on the big diagonal, is the strongest piece in uh, the opponent's game here. And uh, the remark continues down here. Uh, threw my horse away too easily. Um, so keep my powerful pieces and find ways to support them. Yeah, let's actually look back. Um, where did I end up losing my horse? Where did that happen? Because it was painful. Oh, I voluntarily exchanged it. Could I have done such a thing? I said it was painful, but the fact that I initiated this exchange and forced it seems to suggest that I didn't feel any pain about it. Uh, or at least I should have considered other possibilities. Um... And then I can't attack on this long diagonal anymore. See, I'm trying to stop the inevitable, and it just can't be stopped. Um, hmm. Why did I do silver takes? I don't know. The position is extremely difficult to begin with, but... I was trying to stop the pawn from advancing. Yeah, okay, that's why. But yeah, then this crashes in, and I'm doomed. So, yeah, here, I mean, there's just too much for me to keep track of, and that's the key point, um, is that if I try to play this style where I try to punish the opponent for not having pieces in hand, can I succeed at such a task? And I think the answer is, well, it depends. Um, can I succeed at this sort of punishment? Only if, as part of this punishment, I am also attacking. I can't just play a purely defensive game. Um, even when my opponent does things that scare me, I need to find some kind of attack and some kind of defense. Always need to be fighting on two fronts at once. It's immensely taxing, but that's what the game is. I keep remarking that chess is a battle and shogi is a war. Um, and the reason is, yeah, like, there's just, I mean, yeah, sure, in chess there's a lot to consider, but it continuously simplifies. In shogi, things always get more complicated, um, until, like, the end becomes clear. So, that's part of what makes this game beautiful, but it also means that there's so, 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 so much to be considered. Um... So yeah, there's a lot of opening attacking ideas I have to rethink. Um, so between this and Alexi's point about... Um, where was it that I pushed this? Uh, so there's this more modern style here where I could push this again. Um, this is another front I could attack on. This seems quite complicated, at least in what I've heard about it. Um, I think if nothing else, it would discourage them from diving into the corner, but they're kind of halfway there already. So, um, that might be something to study further, but I think there's still merit in what I did. 
um, up to maybe not this pawn push right away. Um, but yeah, when I played that, that was extremely committal. Not because of the pawn, but because I've given up other possibilities. I've started an attack. I thought it was doing fantastic here because I'm attacking the silver. Silver has to choose whether to advance or retreat, and if the silver retreats, I can start aiming at it very easily. But um, this is not so effective. So, yeah, what's said here is that perhaps a silver advance based on player's experience is more promising. I think so. Sure. Silvers belong in the center. They really do. Unless you can get them, like, right next to the king, but the center is a beautiful place for a silver piece, or silver general. Um, so this is one means or method of attack. Use your silver to force exchanges. I still not completed this castle. The rook is still not defended. This pawn advance could still happen very quickly here. But uh, the castle is not completed. That's the point. So this is one way to go. I wonder, though, what's behind door number two? So, yeah, I did complete my castle. Sure, that's a mature, responsible thing to do. But, like, I feel like there's something else here that only I'm commenting on. So let's load up. This isn't the greatest engine ever. Um, okay, this engine doesn't want to attack. Find me an engine that wants to attack here. I don't know that it's... It's probably quite unreasonable. But yeah, this pawn move, therefore, is overcommittal, at least at now. Um, can this at least recommend... <laughs> Well, okay. Yeah, but it's not human. Well, no, that's... Even if this engine recommends that. I was looking for some other kind of attacking move here. There's a lot to consider. Um, but I guess what this boils down to is, if, like, if I'm not going to push this pawn on the edge twice, why push it once? Most of the time it spooks the opponent out of diving into the corner like this. But, um, I don't particularly care for what Fairy Stockfish is saying here. Yeah. Oh, let's go back to Alexi's notes on this. So, um, one nine five is playable, says Alexi, aiming for this type of game. This being a relatively modern style of play. So here my king resides right there. And I tried to open this and also try to open my rook file. Um, yeah, this seems tough. But... The notion here is that we're splitting their attention between defending their king and defending this file. Um, so I feel like this is useful information. I'd have to review this several times to really grasp what's going on in Alexi's notes, but he's quite thorough. Chogi harbors notes here. Uh, she hits some of the highlights of the position. And I would mentioned in my comment asking for game review here, and uh, Lexi didn't see this, but uh, Shogi Arbor got to see it. I was just like super confused, like what happened this game. Because um, like, I just could not find attacking ideas and I got mated. Um, so this is a very risky game. Um, yeah. I exchanged off my good pieces. She raises that point, and I kind of glossed that over in my excitement during this game. Um, 
But yeah, what more can be said? Yeah, even though I've like mopped up both gold generals, I thought that'd be enough to stop the attack. It wasn't. Not at all. Our opponent attacked sharply and uh, crushed us. Um, yeah, and they even missed several key attacking moves, and we're still able to crush this. So, like, I clearly have to attack harder and better. And um, if I'm going to be playing against this kind of shape, ask ourselves who is better and why. And then chess, that's something I have to ask too. Uh, but in Shogi, it seems quite relevant to understand do you have confidence to play this position? Do you have some feeling or plan or idea? Whereas in chess, like, it's very much about who's got the better position, not about who's going to play the rest of it better. In chess, we've exhausted openings quite deeply. There is still a lot more to learn about chess openings, but you can sit down to play an opponent in a tournament game and play like 20 moves at least from memory. Strong, strong players do that. And it's quite agitating or uh, difficult um, that an opponent can just play these moves in a chess game and you'll have a very, very, very difficult game trying to come up with innovations on the fly. And sure, in Shogi, it's also extremely difficult um, if you're playing extremely sharp lines to do innovation, but it's not like every line is super critical, at least not yet. Um, so there is still some room to make your own decisions, play how you want to play as opposed to play the best move. And um, then, yeah, it comes down to, is this something that's within your style and competence and such? Um, and if not, perhaps consider backing up and trying to play a bit differently. So, um, yeah, if I play Rook 4-2, this is probably in most games, it would play out this way more frequently. King 8-3. Uh, so I played to defend this pawn, and Shogi Harbor points out two things I was completely unaware of. One, you know, letting the pawn go can be a valid strategy, um, depending on the position. Uh, two, if the opponent's built a four-piece castle right near next to the pawn, Giving up the pawn in order to like build a faster initiative is not worth it. So, um, yeah, these are two facts we learned. It doesn't affect this variation. Uh, and sure, we could have like built a different castle. And that probably would have been prudent here. Um, but, um, yeah, this my notion that, hey, I want to hold on to this pawn because we're kind of closer to the opening than to the end game. It's not quite so essential all the time. Here it still is probably reasonable, but um, there are other good moves too. And then backing up a bit further. Um, yeah. So uh, not only do we know why um, this silver advance is more useful, uh, but also a bit of a anecdote to go with it to help us maybe retain this piece of information better. Um, maybe, maybe not. Uh, maybe the anecdotes are just a fun little tide, uh, tidbit along the way. Um, yeah, and then this Rook 2-2, uh, both annotators note that this is like unnecessary and shows my... I would say this shows my lack of confidence in this position, but they wouldn't say that necessarily. I would say it. I think it's true. Uh, yeah, and this uh, bishop retreat is a bit early. Um, um, sure, we're concerned about this opening, but we don't have to defend the pawn right away. The end result was quite similar, but... We, other chances, honestly, must have been missed, right? Whether it's in this position or the positions leading up to it. 
So I spent a tempo putting my king on 8-2. And like, our opponent is playing some... They moved this pawn twice, they moved this pawn, this pawn, they moved this silver three times. And now they're moving a bishop. Um, they're making a lot of moves that aren't related to building a castle. Um, therefore, I can like play more aggressively, not be such a scaredy cat. It involves learning how to attack quickly, but you know the point of playing games and reviewing them is so you can learn from it and play better next time. So yeah, this edge pawn push idea is a thing. But what else is there? Pawn 6-4. I mean, sure. King 8 2 Yeah, I don't know. A lot of these moves I'm not convinced by Fairy Stockfish's analysis. We don't exactly have an opening book uh, to consult here either. Um, yes, I'm still a bit curious. I mean, King 7-2 is probably quite reasonable. But from, like, here, surely there's a lot of ways to proceed. And surely I've played in a really scaredy cat sort of way. With this silver climbing all the way up here, what I should remember is that this silver is not aiming for my bishop. Silver's going to join the castle and form some stronger shape here. Uh, if this were aiming for the bishop, it would have taken some other route to get there. And if I remember that, then maybe we back up a bit. Okay, now I guess I did play this before they played that. But, like, my sense of timing's all off. If I'm perceiving that I might want to exchange bishops on account of whatever they're playing, yeah, I should build this castle, uh, build it up a little bit more, see what they're doing. My sense of timing was very much off here. So... Not saying that any one individual move is the grain of rice that tips the scale or whatever, but all of them put together meant we got this position, and then once we got this position, it just got harder and harder. So, um, yeah, try to keep an open mind, stay calm. It's rough, but we can do it. There's a lot to learn. Thanks again to both Alexi for providing this analysis and Shogi Harper for providing this analysis. Hopefully I'll rem uh, remember things from these lessons and be able to act on them in future games, whether it's through the teaching ladder, whether it's through uh, more Shogi Wars games or something else. Um, yeah, thanks, and I'll do my best.